Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the great words that were said here from the beginning. That was awesome, Pastor Sebit, Prophetess, Brother Jeff. Thank you so much. Last Sunday, um, I started uh, speaking on um, planting and watering and, and harvesting uh, just to prepare our heart for fruitfulness. Amen. I explained, and I'm going to explain very quickly, that we, we are governed by two kinds of systems. One that is human, you know, worldly system, a natural system, and the other one that is supernatural, you know, that comes from above, heavenly system, spiritual system. And I said that the spiritual system, the supernatural system, was above the natural system. It was powerful, because the natural system is subject to everything. If it rains or it does not rain when it was supposed to rain, and then the natural system is just all over the place. But the supernatural system, it rains or not, it is above. And it can even override whatever has decided in the natural. Hallelujah. Yes. I urge everyone, let's read the Bible um, in a way that we understand God's uh, principles. Yes. Hallelujah. And we spoke about the seed. We say that everything that God uh, does is taught by a seed. A seed. And we say that his word is a seed. And his word is life. I said his word is life. Let's take the example of Lazarus. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. One day when Jesus was away, Lazarus got sick. They went to look for Jesus. At that time, they did not have... Um, vehicles or whatever system we have to move quickly. So it took time to get to Jesus. Jesus knew what was going on. So he took more time to come back to pray for his friend. Eventually, when he got to where Lazarus was, Lazarus was already dead. He knew Lazarus was already dead. But Lazarus' family did not know so they were there, sad, crying, and even blaming Jesus, saying, where were you? Come on, you should have been here even before. All that Jesus said was, Lazarus, come out. Oh, Lazarus, come out. Because God spoke, because his word is life, death was under arrest. Death had to, to flee. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. Brothers and sisters, all that you need in everything you're doing is a word from God. The word from God is life. I don't know the situation you're going through this morning. You just need a word. Hallelujah. Just a word. The Bible says in the beginning it was dark. Darkness was everywhere. Hallelujah. And God said one word, may light be. God called the light. Hallelujah. Darkness did not even have time to collect his belonging and go. Darkness had to disappear immediately. Brothers and sisters, you need just a word from God. And in an instant, the problem that you have will disappear. The Bible said, and there was light. Yes, there was light because God said, light, come here. Right. Hallelujah. You may be going through problems right now. And I'm going to insist. All that you need is a word from God. Right. Light, come, and light will come. You can pray you turn blue. If you do not receive a word from God to change your situation. Hallelujah. Your situation will not change. I pray this morning that the word of God that we hear here this morning be a seed in your life. Yes. A seed that will bring joy. Yes. A seed that will bring peace. Yes. A seed, hallelujah. Amen. Today, we're talking about seed. If you have a seed that is the word of God, you have a solution to your problem. Hallelujah. 
I told you that a few months ago when we came up with fr 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 fruitfulness for 2019, the more I was thinking about fruitfulness, the more God was giving me a picture that was away from fr fruitfulness. He was taking me from fruitfulness to the beginning of everything. I found myself planting while my eyes and everything was looking at fruitfulness. God put me from the beginning and brought me slowly to fruitfulness. So I understand that I will spend more time talking about planting, watering, taking care of your garden. That will bring you to an effective fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Last day, week, I told you that we are very disturbed by all the principles, natural principles that we go through. Because we are used to them. Hallelujah. If I, if I say gravity, everyone will understand. It is a force that pulls your body toward the earth. Everyone knows that. Hallelujah. Yeah. If I say 2 plus 2 equals 1, no one will understand that. Everyone will say, no, 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 no. 2, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Hallelujah. So God has some principles that we have to understand. Gravity is a human principle. It pulls you down. Everything. If I, I'm not used to this mic, but that's okay. If I let this mic go, it will fall on the ground. If you go on top of a building and then you jump, um, guess what? You're going to die. You will come down very quickly. Uh, yeah, if, even if you are light, you will end up going down there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I know in some countries we have um, preachers who, who walk in the air. I don't know how they do. <laughs> Just ask them to go on top of a building and, and to jump. So we we'll see how, how they walk in the air. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have people, crazy people all over the place. Those are natural laws. Uh, you cannot just break them. By your own, you cannot walk in the air. Eh? And on the water as well. You will just go down. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, Do not be misled. You cannot mock God. You will always harvest what you plant. This is true for these pastors, and this is true for us too. Hallelujah. So 2019, we said was a year, is a year of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. We will do a lot of planting. Amen? Yes. I don't know, I know you don't know that, you don't like that part. We will do a lot of harvesting. Amen. I, was, I knew that, I knew. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, God's principles are, are easy. Are easy to understand? Are easy to follow? If you have faith. Hallelujah. I, okay, I'm going to give you an example. If a person says to you, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. As long as yourself, you are not confessing with your, your, your mouth. You don't believe that you are beautiful. You will be miserable. How many people, how many young girls that we know, they have killed themselves because they believe they were not beautiful. Actually, they were very beautiful. So from today on, start using your mouth to confess something. Because what you say with your mouth has a power. I don't care what other people say you are. If you say I'm beautiful, I'm strong, you are what you say you are. Hallelujah. Because that word is a seed as well. Hallelujah. 2019, we will practice a lot of things. If you do not believe, we will call some people here. Hey, come here and say who you are. Hallelujah. It, it got to come out. If it comes out, and then you believe in it. Because God did not make even one person ugly, repulsive. No, no, no. You are awesome the way you are. But it has to come from you, and you have to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Planting. We will go quickly through some principles here. Whatever you need more of, whatever you're looking for with all your heart, 
at any cost? Brothers and sisters, that is the very thing I'm asking you to plant. That thing that you're looking for is that thing that you have to plant. If you need help, from today on, start giving help to other people. You are the one who is looking for help. Hallelujah. If you need any help from God, that day today, start giving help to other people. A person is sick, you are sick, and you need God to heal you, well, well, well. Start praying for people who are sick. I mean, with dedication. Hallelujah. What you do not know is that someone's problem can be a seed for you. Hallelujah. It is his problem, but for God to release an answer for you, you need a seed. Hallelujah. You cannot have any harvest if you did not plant. But what is the, the, your planting means you have to pray for another person who is sick while you are looking for that very thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's things are mysterious. Sometimes you do not understand. Sometimes it's just unbelievable. If you take a coconut fruit, hallelujah, and you tell a person, you're thirsty, okay, here is your drink. If that person has never seen a coconut fruit, the person will say, you are crazy. This thing is so hard, I need a hammer to open it. Hallelujah. If you open it, there will be water. That tastes very, very good. Even if you just find it somewhere in whatever place, you open it, it's pure, it's tasty, it's wonderful. How did the water get in there? That's not your problem. That is God's problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm just connecting you to the mysterious things of God. Do not question that's the way it works. There is water in the coconut. You cannot open it by knocking at it. You really have to use a hammer. Oh, I don't know how they do, but you need strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I'm asking you guys to pray for others. If you need anything to move in your own life, you have to pray for others. Yes, you have to pray for yourself too, but spend more time praying for others. Hallelujah. Others people's problems may be a seed for you. Hallelujah. And while you are praying for others, use the same intensity, favor that you do when you're praying for yourself or your family members. Hallelujah. When God sees that commitment, that love, now he responds to your own prayers. Proverbs 11, verse 25 says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Hallelujah. I know people in this church for almost 20 years. I mean, they run left and they run right just to help people. Sometimes, when they know two, three, four people are in need of job, they just create a, 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 how do you call it? A business. From nowhere, they create a business just to give a work to those people. Do you understand? I have seen it for, for, for almost 20 years. Hallelujah. For almost 20 years until now. What, what that means. God is still blessing them. The more they bless others, and the more God blesses them. The more you pray for others, the more God heals you. That is what I'm talking about this morning. Do not be selfish. If you're selfish, you are not planting anything. If you do not plant, you will not reap. Hallelujah. It starts by a seed. Even in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, it says, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various uh, kinds. And it was so. So every kind will produce itself. Hallelujah. The monkey will produce another monkey or many monkeys. Hallelujah. 
the cow will never produce a monkey. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a revolution, whatever you, 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 they teach you at, at school, that's not true. It's just a lie. God said at the beginning, Genesis, that's the first book. A, a, am I right here? Uh -huh. It says the same kind, but it comes from a seed. A seed of a mango will produce a mango. Hallelujah. So nothing, absolutely nothing will happen if you do not plant. Genesis, John, John chapter 12, verse 24. Very truly I tell you, unless a seed of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will remain only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Unless it dies. Unless it goes under there. Every year, I buy flowers. Because I want my house to look like my neighbor. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. It's all beautiful. I see the red. I see the yellow. I see the green. I say, okay, I'm going to do the same. Okay. But I don't have the time. And I don't have the passion of my neighbor. And the knowledge. So I buy flowers. Sometimes I forget them in the vehicle, <laughs> you know, and then I wait, we water, we do whatever, and I don't understand. And then one day I open the trunk, <sighs> all the seeds are still there. <laughs> eh? And I have been sending kids, yeah, you go water, you know, <laughs> but I did not plant anything. <laughs> Amen? If you do not plant, you will not reap. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm talking about flowers, but it touches every other thing you can imagine. Hallelujah. When I was small, this planting thing is since I was a small kid. I will plant my own things in small boxes because I, I had the impression that I was able to do something. When you're a small kid, you're discovering this, you're discovering that. So for me, I was in doubt. I did not know if I take like a bean and then I plant a bean or a anything, right? If one day it will flourish, if it will bring flowers and so on and so on. I did not know that. So I tried. Every day I will go check. Every day. And then one day, poop, something comes out. And then a few days after, every day something comes out. But as I spend my time looking at that thing because I need to see when the change will happen. I don't know when the change happens. Brothers and sisters, you just plant. Mm -hmm. But everything else, it's really not your problem. The Bible says plant, water, and everything else, it's God's. Brothers and sisters, 2019 is a year of fruitfulness. But you got to plant. And you got to water. If you miss those two steps, you will be like me, watering a place where actually I forgot to plant. Nothing, absolutely nothing will come out of the ground. Even if you, I mean, I, I do it with dedication. I do not miss them every morning. Like my neighbor, you know, we, it's like a competition. On the other side, it's all red, yellow, green. My side, nothing. <laughs> because I did not check my car. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when I was a small kid, I understood one thing. You plan by faith. You have no idea what will happen. You don't know. You water by faith. Because you know that every morning you just put some water. And you will harvest by faith. Amen. Amen. You cannot see what is happening. You cannot dig that thing out every time to, to look to see the change. You cannot do that. But someone is taking care of what you have planted. Hallelujah. People are wondering, when is a good time for me to plant? I don't know what you want to plant. Maybe you want to join the evangelism ministry go to hospitals and do all other places and minister to people. That is an example of planting. Prison ministry is another example of planting. 
Every single day this church is opened in the afternoon. Every single day there is people here praying. The church is open for the entire city. You want to come pray? It's another kind of planting. You don't know who will come. You don't know people's needs. Hallelujah. If you want to be here, you want to pray, you want to offer your time, just connect and then come and plant. 2019 will be a year of planting because we are all looking for this fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you do not do that, if you're wondering when the time is now, hallelujah, plant when you have a need. Huh? Don't wait until you're sick to remember what I said if you're sick, pray for others. But you're already sick. Hallelujah. Maybe you should start a little earlier. The time is now. It's when you're praying, brothers and sisters, I am picturing God listening to a person and saying, Father, you brought me to Cross Point Fellowship Church. I do not miss Tuesday um, prayer at 6 p.m. I'm always here for frontline, Lord. I know all the pastors. I even visited this sister in prison, Lord. Remember me. Remember my problem. Remember that I'm sick. Hallelujah. God is saying, plant a seed. Plant a seed. That's, that's, that's the answer. Hallelujah. Knowing me is fantastic, I'm telling you. It is fantastic. But plant a seed. Hallelujah. You, praying is good too. But let's change the way we do things. You, you're hoping God to help you for a fiancé or you buy a house, plant a seed. Brothers and sisters, plant a seed. If you do not do that, you look like a farmer who spent the entire time leveling up the level of, of his field, removing all the weeds and everything, and pray, Lord, thank you, thank you. He did not plant yet, right? He keeps his, feed, his uh, seeds in the storehouse, but he goes to pray. Thank you, Lord, you great. Oh, hallelujah. Greater is in his, me than he is in the world. Outside of season, in sin, nothing will happen, brother. Go out and plant your seed. If you plant your seed, then you can go pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't make any noise. Go plant a seed, and then you can pray. If you pray, you don't do any work, nothing will happen. Hallelujah. You plant, you water, and God will multiply. God said, respect my principles, and I will do a miracle. I spoke a um, few months ago about um, the prophet that uh, was Elijah. After a battle with all the bells, um, worshippers, and all the, the whatever people he was battling with, he isolated himself because he declared a drought in the city. For three years, there was no, no rain, nothing. So people were dying because they did not have any food. It, it got to him to a point where he did not have water, he did not have any food. And God said, said to him, go to this city, uh, Zarephath, and then I will feed you there. But people in that city did not have food either. They were dying. So he went, and then he met this woman. And then he asked the woman, would you give me some water? The woman said, oh, yeah, no problem. And then when he was, she was going to get water, he said, okay, by the way, bring me also uh, some food. <laughs> the woman said, okay, listen, <laughs> water I can give. <laughs> no problem. But food, no. All that I have is for me and my son. We're going to eat today, and then we're going to die. Hallelujah. What this mother did not know, the prophet the prophet's needs was her seed. That's the seed she was looking for to be able to live tomorrow and after tomorrow. Sometimes God will send your way a seed that is very complicated. 
a seed that you don't want to see, a seed that you don't want to hear. This mother had her last meal for herself and her son. And the prophet is saying, give me some of your meal. I do not have enough for myself. I don't have enough for my son. How can I give? I have nothing. Brothers and sisters, this mother, by the grace of God, listened to the prophet. Cooked the meal, did everything she needed to do, and the prophet said, give me first. <laughs> uh, this is very difficult. I'm telling you, seed will come to you in a very difficult way. The prophet said, give to me first. So before you eat, before you have even enough for your son, I need my part first. She listened, she satisfied the prophet's needs, and that was a seed for herself. Hallelujah. The Bible said, from that day, the jar of oil and the flour were always full. She was serving herself, but it was always full. Brothers and sisters, other people needs may be your seed. Amen? All that you're looking for is a seed. Not any kind of answer. Because a seed multiplies. Amen? Amen. You're waiting for God to give you a job. You're waiting for a fiancé. You're waiting for immigration papers. Start planting seeds. Hallelujah. You pray and God will send you in one direction. And it is in that direction that you know that I have to plant seed here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you plant is what you reap. I said to you, if you plant oranges, do not expect to reap mangoes. You reap exactly what you planted. If you plant uh, zucchini, for those who like vegetables, you will not reap matembele. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you don't know what matembele is. as a kind of zucchini. But if you plant zucchini, expect to reap zucchini. Hallelujah. Why am I saying this? If you plant wickedness, the Bible says, you will reap evil. Hallelujah. I know I like using met metaphors. You will be used to that. If you plant wickedness, the Bible says, you're going to reap a lot of evil. So if you're going through troubles at work, at home, and you do not understand what is happening, stop and think about what you have been planting. Yes. Hallelujah. Everything has a consequence. Everything. And some consequences, they go from generations to generation to generations. Some of us, hallelujah, we are reaping the benefit of prayers of our parents the behavior of our parents. What they have been doing in the past has a positive effect on us. One time I was uh, teaching couples and I gave them an example of um, a study that was done in New York. Um, they compared two families. The Duke family, ungodly family, and the Jonathan's Edwards family. This is a true story. So on one side, you have Duke's family. The forefather married a, har a harlot, a prostitute. This was the ungodly family. Well, after five generations, they had 1,200 descendants. Out of the 1,200 descendants, 400 were diseased, already passed. 200 of them were convicted criminals. Seven murders, 50 notorious immoral women. 300 children, 300 who were dead of neglect. 300 lived in poverty and with a cost of over a million to the city of New York. On 
the other side, talking about seeds, this was a godly family. Whatever seed that Jonathan and his wife planted into the descendants, they had 1,400 descendants. 120 of them went to the University of Yale and they graduated. 165 went to other colleges and they graduated. 13 of them were president at the school. 10 were professors. 100 ministers, hallelujah. 100 lawyers, 80 public officials, 70 of officers in the Navy, 60 authors, 30 judges. Two families, comparison over five generations. Hallelujah. The seed, you reap what you sow. Jokes family, you don't even, even have to read a lot. You can understand what kind of seed was going on in the family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. Most of your relatives are not here. Some of your kids are not here. Some of them are not even saved. Amen. Today I'm asking to start planting a seed. A seed that will break the generational patterns from your forefathers to you and to, to the people coming after you. That was what was missing in Jukes' family, and that was exactly what was present in Jonathan's family. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to, to 5 says, I'm not going to read all of that. It says, it's time now for everything. There is a time for everything, and this is the time to plant. Don't think I'm talking to you for you to start thinking, okay, I'm going to plant now. I'm, I'm asking you to start now. There is a time for everything, but the time for planting is now. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 says, planting is now. If you have been attending Cross Point Fellowship Church, and this is your second time, you are not a guest anymore. You are a member, an effective member. So I'm talking to you as well. So this message is for you as well. Start planting. Hallelujah. It's now. Planting, plant peace in your house. Have a peaceful house. Plant joy around you. Tolerance. When someone says something and then you feel like jumping, no, don't jump. Hallelujah. It's called tolerance. Uh -huh. Manifest tolerance. Do not kill the person who just passed you on the highway. Let him go. Please, let him go. Hallelujah. And check your speed too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your spouse, your children, plant love, plant understanding, plant flexibility. They will see in you, and that's what they will do as well. When I have more time, we'll talk about that. Hallelujah. Very important. You want to reap love? So love. Hallelujah. Patience. I was talking about generosity. Be generous. Don't wait until someone really falls. If you see a person has a problem, approach them. Hey, ask them, brother, how can I help? Some people, depending on education, uh, whatever it is, culture, they won't talk to you. If God put you in your heart to bless a person, just do it. It's a seed you are planting, brothers and sisters. It will produce back to you. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 8, said, Still other seeds fell on the fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as it has been planted. God, this morning, is promising you, if you plant a seed, I will multiply that seed 30, 60, even 100 times the initial seed that you planted. Yes. Hallelujah. So my question is, what are you planting? Yes. Brothers and sisters, that was the question. Yes. What are you planting or what are you planning to plant? The word of God is yes is amen. 
So there is no doubt in my mind. There should not be any doubt in your mind that multiplication is real. Yes. Multiplication is real. If you plant, be patient. Hallelujah. It will produce fruit. The book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right. If you don't give up. It's called patience. It's called faith. It's called planting. I plant, I water, and I wait. I do not give up. That means you continue to water. We have seen people coming from the prison. They are released, and the next Sunday they are here. They are here. They have been serving. Some of them you did not know, but they were in prison. That's where they met a Cross Point Fellowship member, praying for them, saying something. How many people gave their life to, to Jesus in prison, in sinners' homes? How many? You do what you need to do, and you continue doing, you continue worrying. Don't look at the watchers, okay, this person has not given the, the, the life to Jesus. That is not your job. Do what you need to do, and then leave the multiplication to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the principle of multiplication. You can forget everything I preach today, but know that one word that comes from God through your mouth can produce a lot on the other side. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I have to warn you, if you plant hate, you will harvest hate 30, 60, even 100 more times that the initial hate was. Brothers and sisters, if someone, that's why the Bible says, if someone slaps you on this side, give, give them the other side too. Because the, you, you want to slap them back. Do not do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know we have some children here. If you choose to disobey your parents, God will make you pay the consequences of your disobedience 30, 60, even 100 times. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a promise. It is in the Bible. We are not talking about the principles of harvesting, sowing, and reaping for nothing. The more you want to receive 100 times a good thing, the more you can receive as well 100 times a bad thing. Because God will multiply. Whatever you're planting, I will multiply it. So it's for you to know. Once you know, you know what you're planting. You're planting the right thing. The book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22, says, As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and reaping, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Hallelujah. This is a decree from God. It's something that will not change. So no matter what you think, no matter what you believe in, reaping and sowing are God's principles. They will not change as long as we have earth. Right. Hallelujah. As long as there is sun, rain, that principle will remain. Hallelujah. You can't harvest something you did not plant. Right. Hallelujah. So sow in others if you, need, if you need something back to you. Proverbs 28, verse 22, says, A stingy person is in a hurry to get rich, not realizing that poverty is about to overtake them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do now, I know some people will say, okay, I give, I give, I give. I'm tired of giving. I give my time. I give money. I give everything. I'm running out of means to give. The Bible says this in second book of Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. The sower will always have seed to sow. I gave you example of people in the church for the last 20 years I know they have been giving everything they can. Time, money, everything. You need them, they come. Hallelujah. It means they did not run out of things. So the more you give, the more you have, the more you receive, and the more you can give. It's, it is not a joke. 
If it hasn't worked for you, it's because you haven't tried yet. Amen? Givers will never lack. Amen. I repeat, givers will never lack. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May today you reach out to a person you know that is in trouble and give what God has commanded you to give. Eh? I know we turn off certain things we hear. You turn off. Eh? You turn off. Because you hear some things, no, no, that is not coming from God. I'm telling you today, it is coming from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, I gave the example of Akir, who happens to be Pastor Joseph's wife. She gave us a testimony how she came to church, asking how she's going to go home. Right there, when she was praying, God spoke to a person. So, go bless that lady who is there. There were many ladies here. Hallelujah. And then she went, he went to, to bless that very person. That is something coming back to her. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many people here, when they have no gas, almost nothing, they will say, let me go to church anyways. I need to go to church. And I need to pick up people on my way to church. How many? Ah, you will save your gas for the work on Monday. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I know. That is not what she did. Hallelujah. Other people's needs became a seed for her. And God rewarded her here in the church. The husband is here. Hallelujah. So don't postpone something God spoke to your heart and told you to do. There is a brother who came to our church for the second time. His name is Pete. He is not here today. And I asked him, Pete, why did you choose a cross print? He said, I went to other churches, few of them, and no one was paying attention to me. I had the impression that people, they did not want to connect with me. So people went to the people they were used to, say hi, and then they ignored me. No one approached me. But when I came here, from the main door, people hugged me. Brothers and sisters, God is sending you seeds, but you have been pushing them away. Pete was a seed that fell in the good soil, and that will produce fruit. He told me, this is my church. Hallelujah. So do not just be okay showing up, showing up in the church once in a while. Uh, you are here. God will send people to test you. God will send people that actually are your seed. You have just no idea. You're waiting for a seed that you can see and you can touch. That's a natural principle. We're talking about supernatural principle. Be careful about other people's needs because that's the seed for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Make an impact. If you touch other people, there is a guarantee of an increase. We, you want to be fruit, fruitful? Okay. Pay attention to others. Pay attention to the needs of others. Amen. Amen. Today I'm asking you, brothers and sisters, to risk to say hi around. And if it's risky for you, if you are not comfortable, take the risk today. A person you do not know, take the risk today to go ask them how they're doing. Hallelujah. Even if they say, brother, I don't know how I'll go home. This is a seed for you. Give them a ride home. If they say, I don't know if today my kids are going to eat, say hallelujah. Thank you for the seed, hallelujah. Give them something to satisfy their needs. It is nothing for you probably, but it is a lot for them. But a seed is small. It's tiny. That's all that God needs, a tiny little thing. And the multiplication is not yours. The multiplication is his. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, take that risk. Reach out to people. Reach out to people. You need joy. You need peace. 
That's what you have to do. So the same thing you're looking for. In your house, stop planting strife, fights. Because you're going to reap strife. You're going to reap fights. Hallelujah. It is too quiet today. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat that. Okay? I'm sure I'm far enough. Okay? When you plant a seed of strife, a, a, a seed of unhappiness. Hallelujah. Arguing all the time with anyone in your house. That is exactly what you're going to reap. There will be a multiplication of conflict in your house. Conflict, unnecessary conflict. Disappointment, unfulfillment, and divorce. Where do you think divorce comes from? You cannot wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to divorce you. Brothers and sisters, I will say, stop. Let's go back to the beginning. What did you plant? Divorce is a consequence of what you have planted. Hallelujah. Just change what you're planting in your home. Hallelujah. If you plant the right seed, if you plant joy, happiness, you know, even if some, someone steps at you, so, brother, actually, that was my feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Glory to God. And then the person will say, oh, I am sorry. You know, if you take the habit of planting the right thing, God will multiply. Yeah. Multiply anointing. Multiply joy in your heart. Multiply blessing. Multiply protection. A seed is small. It's almost nothing. And the seed will never come in a form that you, you, you're hoping to come. Hallelujah. A seed may come, may come in a form of problems from other people that you have to go to solve. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I know I speed it up a little bit. I would like to address <coughs> another problem. I know here people are hurting. You have been planting, planting, planting. You do not see anything. When harvest comes, you have barely nothing there. It has been difficult for you. You, you can stand up as you're finishing. You can stand up. You understand the sowing and the reaping very well, no problem. But you have been planting. You have been faithful in what you have been doing. You have given your time and money and everything. And then there is no return. Some of us are going through a difficult time. Some have lost the loved one. Some have people sick left and right. Hallelujah. You have given your best. Some of us, even coming here, is not easy. But yet you come. You know you have been a good parent. You have been a good spouse. But... Things can turn around sometimes in a way you did not know, you did not want, and it's difficult for you. Sometimes you do your best, but when you get home, you get a silent treatment. People turn their back to you, and then you're wondering, God, I've been planting, but I'm crying. I'm crying because things are not turning the way they were supposed to do. I've been marrying for quite some time, I do not miss church. I do not miss everything you have asked me to do. But yet, I do not see a child coming. My kids are sick. You gave me this work, but I cannot do it because look what I have on the other side. I know that. But more importantly, God this morning says, I know your situation. I know your condition. Hallelujah. The Bible says in a book of Psalm chapter 126 verse 6 to 5 to 6 those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy those who go out weeping carrying seed to sow will return with songs of joy carrying sheaves with them 
brothers and sisters this morning, do not be discouraged. Do not give up. Hallelujah. If you have the impression that your entire life you have been planting and probably planting for nothing because there is no return, there is nothing. This morning I'm telling you, God is in control. Multiplication belongs to him. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that God remembers your love for your family, remembers everything you have been putting in, remembers your faithfulness to the ministry or to the children of God. Today, this morning, Lord, your word says, those who reap, those who sow in tears, hallelujah, will reap in joy. Oh, hallelujah. We will weep with songs of joy. That's what your word says. I pray for every single person who is here who has been sowing in tears. They haven't seen any sign of rain. Hallelujah. I pray that this morning, Lord, show them a sign of rain. Show them the rain. Hallelujah. Show them. Hallelujah. They have been faithful. They have been giving faithfully. Hallelujah. But they have been attacked all over the place. Left and right are home at work. Nothing is working, hallelujah. Immigration is sending bad letters. Today, this morning, Lord, I'm reminding you, word, those who sow in tears, we will reap with songs of joy. I pray for songs of joy. Oh, hallelujah. Those who are sick this morning, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let them be healed because your word, your word is life, hallelujah. I pray for life. Oh, life, hallelujah. You know, many of the people who are here, Lord, have family members who do not know Jesus. The reason we are here is Jesus. Oh, the, the reason we are dedicated is Jesus. We have the guarantee of the eternal life. Hallelujah. Would you touch them this morning too? Hallelujah. Would you touch our brothers and sisters, nieces, mothers and grandfathers? Hallelujah. Who are still alive. Hallelujah. Who do not know you? Hallelujah. They have been sowing but in vain. In vain. In vain. They will never see you, hallelujah. They will spend eternal life in fire. Would you touch them today, hallelujah? Would you touch them? Today in a time where revival is coming in the city, yet we still have people out there, they do not know you. They mock us when we say we belong to Jesus. They mock us, hallelujah. Would you touch them? Would you reveal yourself to them? One word is what we're asking you, Lord. One word. Just one word. Touch our brothers and sisters. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Touch and change and transform them. Touch them, hallelujah. So they know who you are, hallelujah. Today, Lord, I put the congregation in your hand for this week starting, hallelujah. It could be a very long week for some because parents are in the hospital. Children are rebellious. This could be a difficult week for some of us. But Lord, your word says, whoever looks at me will never be deceived, hallelujah. Our eyes are pointed on you and you alone. Hallelujah. We are not expecting anything from any man. We are expecting from you. And you are not a man. Hallelujah. What you say you will do, you will do it. This week is in your hands. Hallelujah. Touch. Touch our parents. Touch our children. Touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our work and everything we have is in your hand. In your hand. Hallelujah. Build this shield of protection around us, around us, around the ministry, around everything we do, around our city, hallelujah. Block all these attacks from the enemy. Block them. We return them where they're coming from. Return back where you're coming from. And leave the children of God. Experience the joy that has been promised to us. Peace that has been promised to us. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. If you're here and you have received, say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give a last of um, worship to our Lord before we go home. And remember what I said. Risk to say hi to a person you do not know and ask them how they are doing. Let their problem be a seed for you. Amen. May God bless you.